It was uh, pretty surprising that the special counsel would state the obvious in writing uh, that Joe Biden's mental capacity is diminished. I think we see that play out on a daily basis. Uh, what I'm concerned about uh, is the fact that with hidden within that document uh, is evidence that uh, some of the classified documents he mishandled were from Ukraine and China. And that was House Oversight Committee Chairman Congressman James Comer with me here last month on special counsel Robert Hur's report investigating President Biden's handling of classified documents during his tenure as vice president. Hur declining to bring criminal charges against Biden in part due to what he said the jury would see as, quote, a sympathetic, well-meaning elderly man with a poor memory. Her is scheduled to testify this week in front of the House Judiciary Committee that's coming up this Tuesday as House Republicans overseeing the Biden impeachment inquiry had their subpoena denied by the White House that the DOJ hand over transcripts and audio related to Her's interview with President Biden. Meanwhile, special counsel Jack Smith continues to aggressively pursue criminal charges against former President Trump's handling of classified documents. He filed a number of arguments against Trump's bid to dismiss the case. Joining me right now in this Sunday Morning Futures exclusive is House Oversight Committee member, Florida Congressman Byron Donalds. Congressman, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for being here. Good to be back with you, Maria. Your reaction to this approach, different approach, to the uh, classified documents case? Look, I think I find it to be uh, completely disgusting by the Department of Justice. House Oversight and House, Ju and House Judiciary are doing our jobs. We are requesting the information from the, from the special counsel on his investigation into, into Joe Biden. And let's be clear, this is not about Joe Biden's activities during his presidency. It is the fact that he did take classified information from a secure facility when he was vice president and when he was a United States senator. Both are a violation of the Espionage Act. And having a poor memory does not absolve you from violating the Espionage Act. Being old and elderly does not absolve you from violating the Espionage Act. And so once again, you see the two-tier system of justice against Donald Trump simply because he is the Republican nominee and he is actually the person that would blunt the radical Democrat agenda. So what do the Democrats do? Weaponize the Department of Justice, go after their political ri rival. It is fascism here in the United States brought to us by Joe Biden and the Democrats. So what, where does the impeachment inquiry against President Biden stand at this point? You're a member of the Oversight Committee, and you and James Comer have talked about $30 million that you have identified going to Biden, 170 suspicious activity reports, the gift of a Porsche and two diamonds. I want to get your take on specifically what evidence you have, the most egregious evidence that you may have that points to Joe Biden being involved in the influence peddling that you and your committee have laid out. Well, we have it with the fact that we now know that Hunter Biden did bring Joe Biden to this this, this uh, dinner at Cafe Milano. It has been uh, talked about in various deposition transcripts from Tony Bobolinsky to Devin Archer. When we asked Hunter Biden, he couldn't recall. You have the text message famously about requesting money from Chairman Zhao. The money showed up a week later. Hunter Biden, under oath, said he was high, can't remember the text message. But photos from the laptop from hell demonstrate that he actually was at Joe Biden's house on the day that the text message was sent. So you have Hunter Biden contradicting himself. That's evidence piece number one. Evidence piece number two is the fact that you have money that flows to Jim Biden on the same day. Checks are cut to Joe Biden. And then they're calling it a loan, but there are no loan documents that exist. That's number two. And then number three, and most importantly, I think if you're talking impeachment, Joe Biden has willfully violated immigration law in the United States. He has also violated Supreme Court ruling when it comes to student loans, and he does it with impunity. So I believe it's partly the oversight investigation, but it's all for the willfulness of Joe, Joe Biden to ignore the Supreme Court and to not faithfully take care to execute the laws of the United States when it comes to border security. In fact, during the State of the Union address, he tried to school the Supreme Court, attacking them for their decision on Roe v. Wade. Uh, your reaction, and also give us your assessment of Biden's State of the Union this week. 
Well, I found, I found his scolding of the court disgusting, because the left will say that they want to respect the institution, except when they don't get their way. And then mm -hmm. when they don't get their way, they want to call out Supreme Court justices in front of the world. That was outrageous. There was a reason why not the entire, the entire Supreme Court was not there, because I think they understood they didn't want to be subjected to Joe Biden's foolishness. On a whole, the State of the Union speech was disgusting. I've never seen a speech like this, where the opposition party from the president's party did not stand for an hour in that speech. It was partisan. It was a campaign speech. He was trying to prove himself to his political base, because they have serious questions about his ability. And frankly, they should have serious questions about his ability. But it was not about the United States of America. It was not addressing the true state of the union, which is unraveling a bunch of the policies of, policies of Joe Biden, because they've been disastrous for America. Well, this is what I really want to get to. I mean, the State of the Union is an opportunity for America to understand where the country stands on so many issues, whether it's economic or, or, or foreign policy or beyond. I walked away from that State of the Union not really having a clear understanding of what is the State of the Union. So I ask you, what is the State of the Union today? Right now, under Joe Biden, we are a nation in decline. And it's truly sad because America has so much promise. You could make the clear argument, Maria, that the only reason why our economy is still afloat is really because of the ingenuity, the hard work, the ethic, the grit of the American worker, the American businessman, the American financier, all of them working interdependently to just produce goods and services and enjoy America. It's the greatest nation in the world. But with this leadership from Joe Biden, where we have fallen behind on the world stage. We are falling behind when it comes to energy. We are falling behind when it comes to, to regulations, and the government gets bigger as a result. Uh, it's not been good for the United States. We can significantly do better. This is why I believe Donald Trump's going to be the 47th president of the United States. Well, uh, on, on, during the State of the Union, Biden said, and this is a quote, I've already cut the deficit by over $1 trillion. That's just not true. According to the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, Maya McGinnis writes this, more than the entirety of the fall in the de deficit can be explained by COVID relief, enacted under both Trump and Biden, expiring. So the COVID money has expired, and that is why the deficit went down. Uh, COVID-related spending fell by nearly $1.5 trillion between fiscal year 21 and 22, uh, according to the uh, uh, Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, we're still waiting to see if you all are going to get your work done, the appropriations bills, and, and avoid a government shutdown within the next two weeks, right? Oh, that is correct. Two quick things. Number one, your report is absolutely correct. And then Joe Biden did the dumbest thing ever. He juiced federal spending with his American so-called rescue, rescue plan, which created the disastrous inflation that has been crippling American consumers. But when it comes to the federal budget, I do believe we're going to get this work done finally. And it's important for the American people to understand that House Republicans were prepared to get all this done last September. But the reason why this could never get resolved is because Chuck Schumer and Senator Senate Democrats wanted to delay, 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 and delay some more, mostly for politics, but also just to get as much money into the government as possible to spend on reckless policy. It is unfortunate, but this is what happens when you have bad leadership in the Democrat Party. America can do better. And I, I will even say for Democrat voters, they can do better as well, because the people leading their party are leading their, their party into oblivion. It's a shame seeing what's happened to the Democrat Party in America. Congressman, it's great to have you this morning. Thanks very much. We'll be watching your work, of course. Thank you, sir.